Today, we're taking a deep dive into the heart of adventure with my Range Rover's epic off-road sat-nav and radio comm setup. Strap yourselves in as we explore the intersection of luxury and rugged terrain, where GPS meets grit and radio waves dance through the wilderness. From navigating treacherous trails to staying connected in the great outdoors, get ready for a ride that's as thrilling as it is technologically impressive. As the intro of this video would suggest, we have activated beast mode. Um, I'm just going to show you my sat-nav and radio communications for our off-roading on a budget. Um, I have gone over this before, but I thought well, I'd, I've been sent a couple of things to try out. I thought I'd incorporate them in the video, show you what my updated sat-nav solution is. Um, as I say, I have shown you before, but my iPad went kaput, so... <laughs> back to square one but yeah so you've got a this isn't great is it come on let's be honest i'll talk you through it and then um yeah first things first um i've got an ipad or oh, sixth generation ipad 10.9 inch um, that is going to be our main sat nav screen. Um, now, when we're obviously off road in that, we don't tend to have the radio on. If we do have the radio on, I've got the Apple CarPlay screen, which I can stick to the windscreen and then sync my, my phone uh, wirelessly connects to that and I can do the sat nav on my phone. But this is a nice big screen. Um, now, you will remember that Sam over at Sam's Motor and Machine, I'll put a link to his channel down in the description. Um, he made me some of these brackets for uh, fixing my iPad onto the dash. So I'll install it now and I'll show you how we carry on. So these two just poke down in here and then hook on the bottom of the screen. So it just pops in like so. And then this one here goes at the top. I will put the iPad in first, so that just goes in there like so, and that sits there quite nicely then, and then that'll go in the top there, clicks in place, like so, and there we go, that's not moving. Oh, I've switched the radio on, that one's switching off. So the iPad's in place, that's all secure, that's not going anywhere. Obviously we need power it up and this, that and the other. This is only a Wi-Fi iPad, so if you've got just a Wi-Fi iPad, you can't get GPS on it. If you've got the cellular iPad, where you have a little SIM card, you get GPS, as well as Wi-Fi and cell, cellular cell service. Now, you don't need to have the SIM card actually in the iPad to be able to operate the GPS. So if you've got the cellular version, and you don't have a card in it, you can, you can use it as a standalone device, the same as you would do with your phone. Most phones have got GPS built in. Um, however, I've got the Wi-Fi only version. So what I have to do, and this works absolutely brilliantly, um, this is the Garmin Glow 2. Um, and it's I've got the dash map for it as well so that it doesn't wobble about everywhere. That has its own power source. It has got a battery. Um, but the battery lasts for, I think it said 13 hours. This is what I'm talking about. Bloody cables just, we'll get to this point in a moment. Um... <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's just a bloody scramble of wires. It's got its own power. That just plugs into there. So you can actually use it while you're charging it up. So just chuck that on the dashboard, Bluetooth this to your iPad or tablet of choice. Um, and that has been phenomenal. I've never lost a signal. Uh, tell a lie, we did lose signal once just going through some trees. Um, it picked up signal straight away. Anyway, so I'm gonna chuck that on the dash. Now quite often when I'm, we're off-roading and we want sat nav and that, we'll have the phone as well. Um, and that'll just sit on the dash. We've got a little cradle on the dashboard. Um, 
I will sometimes run Wikilocks and record our trail. You can record the trail on other software as well. On the iPad, I'll use Osmond Maps, which I'll show you in a minute. Or we'll have a quick look over it. I'll have Wikilocks on this, or I did have Gaia GPS, but they put the price up and we don't use it enough to justify it. So Google Maps is a good one, but then Osmond um, is a really good one. It's got all the off-road trails on it as well. So all these devices require power, so, and we've got this here, and it's just a, it's a bloody nightmare. Cables and God knows what. So I had a company, sent me an email, said, would you be interested? I was like, in, uh, we do these magnetic cables, and I was like, oh, okay, more stuff. So it's these, magnetic cables, they do, uh, obviously, your USB that you plug in, say, to an adapter like that, I don't know if you can see that, that's an A at that end, so they do a USB A to Lightning, A to C, a C to C Lightning, and a C to C, so depending on your device and how you charge your devices up, they sent me a couple of these, both a metre long, then they do uh, black, silver, or blue, one metre, 1.5 metres, or two metres. I thought I'd give them a whirl and um, see if the, uh, the hype is justified. Um, let's have a quick look here. Uh, yeah, pull it out. It doesn't coil itself back up. Um, you have got to coil it up. But there you go. I shall be putting it for its paces. Um, I've got two of them because I've obviously got the phone and the iPad. Now when you're running sort of sat nav software, it can get a bit um, chew through the old battery. So yeah. So we want to go to Bluetooth, that's on, and it hopefully should see the uh, Garmin Glow. Here we go, Garmin Glow, select that, that's connected. Huh. Ignore, so I don't think we need any of the apps. So we can go to Osman Maps, we should drag it over here and I should be able to press the home button and it's taken us straight to home. So that's all working, that's connected up to that. Um, so yeah, uh, on Osmond I can put in um, my places, tracks. I've got a couple of tracks on here so we can click on that this is a uh, an off-road trail round um, Lake Vaz Vazier, I believe. So you can zoom right in. Uh, obviously, this is the start up here, and it will just take you around. You can customise the route so you can have different colours. Um, 
and you know when you zoom right in all these black dots are off-road trails the thick black ones the the tend to be the the smaller dotted ones and normally footpaths um, but yeah that, that is a really fantastic bit of software osman maps um, really really good and i'll say that that'll be on there now until i switch that route off um, if i press home again it's taken us straight back home again so that's that's all working we're connected up to the gps so yeah those cables are quite handy they're going to be a hell of a lot tidier than that other bird's nest that goes in the uh, center console here um so i will put a link to the description i'm there might be an affiliate link so i might earn a little bit i can't remember how it worked on this particular company yes yeah, so i will put um a link in the description for these if you're interested they seem quite good well, they, <coughs> they seem quite well made um, I'll just take one out now and um, see how well it coils back up. So, I mean, you've, you've obviously got to coil it up yourself. Um, it doesn't magically just coil itself up. What have I done here? Just, and it, it magnetically sticks to itself and you'd think, oh, that might be a bit awkward, but it's not, that's pretty good. So that's going to be nice and tidy, a nice tidy solution. But yeah, what I was saying about um, radio communications, now I've got a CB radio, I've installed the aerial in the back, all the wiring's in there, but I really want to install it up here where the um, sunglasses go. Take the sunglasses holder out, get a bracket in there. Um, but it's a case of running the antenna cable, cable up through the headlining, round into here, um, and then running some more power up to this point because I've already taken a, a, a 10 amp feed I believe it is up there for the dash cam so that I didn't have to run wires down to the like the dash, the fuse box or anything like that um, yeah I would like to have my main CB unit installed up there out the way just take off the handheld thing when I'm not using it and then just sort of have the thing up there so I can hook it on if we're out in convoy with people that have um, that got CB radios, if in the meantime, we're handheld. So I've got handheld CB radio, um, just cheap off Amazon, and it came with a car kit. So if I want, obviously it's got this aerial, which is not great for range, but there is a car kit that came with it, and I've, I've left it in the garage. Um, so it was about 100 euros with the car kit. So it came with the battery, which just should, yeah. <laughs> just slides off the car kit slides into there and that's got um, a plug that goes into the cigarette lighter for your power and obviously there's another wire that comes off that you can plug your external aerial onto so this can then become like a, a car unit um, with a proper good aerial that's on the car now obviously the aerial that's on the car it's all tuned um, but for now a handheld device like this when we're out off-roading and we've got the CB unit in the car and Hobbit gets out and does some spotting for me, she can use walk off with this and I can have the one in the car. Now, obviously, um, PMR446 is an unlicensed... Well, CB radio is unlicensed, but not everybody's got CB. What a lot of off-roaders have got is a PMR446, which is the European license-free um radios that you can get in supermarkets in the blister packs and stuff because they're cheap you can probably get a pair of them for 20 quid or something like that so i've got this and it's programmed for pmr446 and we've got a few of these kicking about that we use here on the farm um so if it, if we're out in a convoy with other people i'll use this um so pmr446 you decide what channel you're going to be on i think there's up to 16 channels um, they do say that some channels are specified for certain things, but they've only got a couple of mile range, if that line of sight. So if it's like quite a built up area, you're not going to get great range. But if you're just in a convoy doing a bit of off-roading, PMR446 is fine. Um, so yeah, we've, we've got sort of two handheld radios if we need it. Um, with hopefully we'll get the other cb radio mounted in permanent up in here that's the plan um but yeah thought i'll just bring you up to date with our satellite satellite navigation and communications so handheld radios 
car to car sort of thing. If if Tina's spotting me, we'll use the, the whatever radios we've got. I say don't be confused by CB and PMR four four six. They're two totally different frequencies. Um, you might potentially get more range with a CB because that's in the 27 megahertz band, whereas the PMR446 in the number, it's right up in the um, high, not high, but uh, oh, is it ultra high or if it's VHF or UHF? I can't remember. <laughs> I'm not all big into radios. I, I do a bit of research and I know what's what, but yeah, so these are up in the 446 frequency. These are in like the 27. So there's quite a bit of difference. Um, whether that makes much difference to the range, I really don't know. I'm not all savvied up on radios, but it does us. And this is our updated thing. So the new iPad, uh, we didn't go for cellular, so we have to use the Garmin Glow. Um, but that's perfect. It does the job. It's up on the window and, you know, everything's all powered up. It would be a nice solution to get the wires tidied up, whether I, I sort of just run had some clips on the side of the console here um, just to let me sort of I'll show you what I'm thinking there's the camera Ooh, I can see you so down here obviously you you can have all your power I've got power running from the back for the Garmin glow and I've got this one I've just taken that one off um, it whether I get some clips on there just to sort of hook them in so that you know when the hobbit's jumping in and out she's not catching the wires and stuff like that so it might be a, a plan and then just sort of run them up the side there um yeah and another thing you need to be careful of is um if you've got a cover on your ipad or device sometimes the um the plugs like that tend not to um fit in past the cover but the the lightning part on this one is quite long and it actually fits in the phone cover and the iPad cover so that's quite good and that's gonna be it for this video I hope you enjoyed it um, it would be nice if we could get out and do some off-roading at some point um, but so much is going on here we're trying to get the house sorted um, we did have a little bit of good news about the Hobbit so I'll update you in a future video on that um, and uh, yeah we shall take it from there so Catch you in the next video. Bye for now.